Hello. Um, I'm coming in incognito. I don't even know how to do this now. I've got to take this sparkle thingy off. How do I do that? Just go nothing there. There we are. <laughs> the things you can do these days with Facebook and stuff. So we are uh, just waiting for a few people to come in. Hi, Sean. Um, how are you doing? We're uh, doing Dave the Dash Hound today. Um, so I thought before we start that, I'll talk you through some of the other toys that we've done um, in White Gecko. Okay, so. Um, aha, there we go. Uh, right. So. We'll forget about Dave for the minute. We've got the elephant that we did. We did it in three sizes. Um, and we quite enjoyed this. Catherine Lum was brilliant at it. Um, she managed to teach me a lot of swear words. Um, it was um, quite a good class. We enjoyed it. Uh, we did a couple of classes and I think there's another one due. Um, one of the classes that we were doing that we haven't got round to because of uh, the COVID is um, Tom Bear. So we will uh, get back to that at some point. Um, so yeah, those are some of the, the other toys that we do. I'm trying to think, what else have I done? We did a doll. Um, so today is Dave the Dashant. Now, this is a free pattern from So Mag. Um, so you can, I, I'll put the, um, the link onto, uh, Facebook after this and you can go there and it gives you, um, instructions and, uh, a template. So you would get, let's turn it around. So you get the instructions and the template. Okay. So you'll be able to go and download that, um, Oh, there we go. You'll be able to download that. So we're going to talk about Dave the Dash Hound today. So uh, my Dave, you can see there in the background, um, is going to take over my um, filming and um, we'll get on with it. Okay, hold on a moment. There we go. Let's show the messy kitchen. I kept it on the table. <laughs> okay, so... Dave the Dash Hound. So you're going to cut out your templates. You can see that it comes on two pages. Okay. Um, so you're going to cut out round. And you want all your bits. Now, I've cut it out in a red. And then thought it's going to be really difficult to show you. So I've cut it out in calico. Which will be a lot easier to show you how to do things because um, you'll be able to see the stitching okay so you have your your year okay you've got your year ear your ear and you're going to cut out four so you can either cut them all out the same color or you can cut them out so that you've got a reverse color okay which is what i've done so the pink for the inside and the calico for the outside. So you need two each of those and you're gonna cut them so that there's a reverse, so that you go opposite ways. Otherwise, it would look a bit strange on his head. You also need a head gusset, which is going to be this bit there. Um, and you need to make sure when you cut out the body, you also need to make sure that you've cut out another one. See the, the belly bit? So I made a template just on normal paper, waxed paper this feels like. Um, normal paper so that you've got the extra template um, so that you're not cutting that bit off. So you end up with your dog. Okay. Now I've gone through and marked my quarter of an inch on here. You can freehand it, 
do it on the edge of, of the foot, but I found that going round the corners, going up and round the corners, it was easier to mark it on there and follow it with your needle um, than trying to get your foot to go around the curves. I thought that was a lot easier. Okay, so we are going to start with, what are we going to start with? We're going to start with our, um, I'm going to start with the, uh, the belly. The belly. Okay, so you can see his back legs here, going up to his tail there, and his neck on this side. So you are going to sew along the straight edge, or the more straight edge, you're going to sew all the way down to the middle, stop and then leave a gap for turning okay so we're going over to the machine now i'm using black thread so hopefully you can see that uh, change my machine so change my needle make sure now i'm using aura th aura thread which we're hoping to get into the shop at some point before we open up again it's a lot thinner finer so you can see I've put a dot which is marked on your pattern I've put that there so I'm going to try and get my needle to start there which is quarter of an inch in okay so you're gonna forward a few steps and back why um, it locks your stitch. It stops it unravelling when you're messing around with it. So you come to there and you're going to lock stitch it again. I prefer to lock stitch it like this, you know, manually, because if I want to reverse when the lock stitch is down, it tends to um, do three back and three forward when I might want it to reverse further so I always do it by by hand but this machine has got that many buttons and things that you could do it so that you've got a lock stitch and it does it automatically then so we're going to come up to the spot the black spot marks the spot there we go so as you can see we've got the hole in the middle which is where you're going to do your um turn it inside out okay now we're gonna finger press that because um i can't be bothered to go to the iron but you can either iron it or finger press it i'm gonna press it open so that you get the um so that your middle also has so you can see where your gap is also doing that which will make it a lot easier when you're coming up to whip stitch it at the end okay so could have used the button there we are okay put that to one side your years 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 okay so right sides together nice thing about calico is there is no right side Using calico, if you're going to use it as a toy for a, a child, would be quite good because you um, they could draw on it. You could get fabric pencils, pens. IKEA do one, so they're fabric pens. They could just draw their own. Doodle all over it. Right. One thing I didn't say is when you're doing the curves. If you drop your stitch down so that it's a smaller stitch, it's a lot easier to go around the curves. Now this one automatically comes to two. When I do the body, I'll I'll take it down again to uh, one point eight or something so that it it it's easier to go around the curves. I'm sure there is a technical uh, reason. I just pick in a spot on my foot and I make sure that as I go round it's always on that bit. Okay. I'm going to 
remember dogs are just as asymmetric as we are what's he done dogs toys in the bin boss <laughs> you have the bin have you okay in this now with your curves you're going to want to clip into your curves now that's quite big isn't it? So Clip into your curves as we normally do. So, so has anybody been out in the garden today? There's been, it's lovely out there. I'd like to, uh, they sat out there, glass of wine. <laughs> right, we are going to turn this round. Just one thing. What's your most used thing that isn't actually a sewing item now i think this would probably be mine okay now I bought this i'm sure i've told you before i've bought this in a uh, shop that sells things for pipes so this is for tamping down pipes and i find it brilliant for stuffing um, another thing that i've bought which is also very good and really pretty is that it's a wish thing um, for your hair but because it's a metal one I find it really good and strong for poking poking things out right with the ears you're gonna open it push it a little bit so that you've got um, an indent and then you just don't gonna, now. yeah no Never work with children and animals. Okay, so see, I'm with my prodder. I can get into my seams and push them out. And then again, with most of what we do, if you roll and pinch, you'll get a tighter, neater edge. We're not going to top stitch this because not many dogs are top stitched. Okay, so you have an, e an ear, so you would repeat that for the other one. Uh, and again, put those to one side. Right, with your dog. Not that one. <laughs> you're going to take your head gusset and on one of your... No, you're not. You're going to put the ears on. You're going to put the ears on. So, this is your right side. You're going to just mark where your ear would go. Okay, in there. And you're going to base the ear on there. And I've done it the wrong way round. <laughs> so, this one. Otherwise, you'd have had a pink ear. So, So you're just going to base that right on the edge. More of the. Uh, it doesn't want to do it. Maybe if I take the stitch length up, that would have been a lot easier. Okay, so you're just going to baste it so that it's there, and you don't. Where we're doing a quarter of an inch. Uh, seam allowance you want to inside that so it's not going to show we're going to take the head gusset and pin it <laughs> <laughs> the dog wants to play the dog always wants to play when it's somebody is doing something so you're going to line up you have dots a and b and you're going to bring your head gusset in between that area. Okay. I don't think I did enough steps this time. Okay. So. Trim some of those off. Okay, not that I'm confused. Right. We're going to put it the other way around 
I don't want this yet. It seems I want to be on the wrong side. Do you know, it's a lot easier when you're doing it on your own and not having to explain it. You always self-doubt. Think, am I doing this right? So it would be right sides together. Um, yeah, I'll bring this down. There. Like that. Now there's a bias to these, so they are slightly stretchy. So you want to even it out in between those two dots, A and B, okay? And then we're going to sew it. Okay. So again with your quarter of an inch, I'm using the applique pins. I'm using the applique pins because they're small and perfectly formed uh, and I like them for toy making, they don't get in the way. So, right. <laughs> so take it easy and slow around the corners. Dogs are now talking to each other. Okay, I'm going to take that one out because it's kind of close there. Okay, there we go. So, are you all with me so far? Are there any questions? No, there's lots of shout outs though. Hello. Oh, hi everybody. Well, I can go okay. through them if you want. I will do after. All right then. So, I'm clipping to that all the way down in there. It takes away some of the bulk. Okay. So there you have C's headpiece there. All right. There we go. So now you're going to put the uh, legs onto this. So right sides together. Like that. And again, we're gonna pin that into place. That's Rufio. You've <laughs> met Rufio before. So, right. So, we're going to quickly pin round here. Where are we on the pin? We've got loads of time. Okay. The only thing about applique pins is they're really, really tiny and... They're tricky to pick up. I'm doing it the right way round, aren't I? Right, okay. So, I pinned it on that side, and now I'm going to turn it that side to sew because that's where my lines are. Move out of the way, dog. Okay, so we're going to start where your dot is. You're going to start there. And like I say, we're going to go all the way round. I'm going to take it down to 1.8, so it's a smaller stitch. Okay. So I want to get to, apparently Pew's Garden Centre is open. 
and I want to get to the garden centre to get some flowers. So what's everybody putting in in the gardens at the moment? I quite like a daisy, so I'll be going down for daisy stuff. Right, can you see where we're going round? Okay, I'm going to take that pin there out. So where I've I've drawn in, you're following round and keeping going round here. And you get a better line if you can make it go in a curve. So it's just a few stitches, stop, turn, a few stitches more, and stop and turn. And you're on the straight then. Okay. Until you get to here. Get that pin out. Okay. So sometimes it's easy with the bias for you to be able to straighten it out a bit underneath. Okay, so in future, pin on the right side. Okay. Good tip. Good tip. Take that tip, you can have that tip for free. Okay, so turn. A few stitches. Oh, don't do that. Turn it. Take your foot off the pedal before you put your hand under there. Now it worried me with the last few dogs that I wasn't doing it. I had some bits where they didn't corner right. But once they're stuffed, it actually looks like... Um, the dog's got wrinkles, which most dogs have wrinkles. Let's face it, don't we all? Um, so, anybody come up with any garden tips? No? Yeah, Sarah wants a skip. A skip? I don't think they grow very well in, the, in this part of the country. Okay, so we uh, don't have an ear on this one. So you have to pretend that it's there is an ear. It's got a nose though. It has a nose. If it had no nose, how would it smell? Terrible. So, <laughs> so again, we're going to pin this in place. And you want to go around here. You want to make sure that your uh, dots line up. Okay, I like it when my dots line up. I like it even better when my dot is cooking. Right. So we're going to pin that there in place. And we're going to come around and again make sure that this point meets that point. There. And then you make, make it all fit in. this uh, little head okay so we're going all the way around um, so, so what are we doing for the rest of the week I can't remember what Sarah's doing tomorrow what are you doing tomorrow Sarah sitting in the garden drinking wine <laughs> wouldn't that be nice <laughs> um, and then on Saturday Sarah's doing a zoom class which some of you were lucky enough to get on um, that's for a project bag and I'm in the shop um, 
Yeah, what have I done there? I've sewn all that in. You twonk. Um, I'm in the shop. I'm going to show you some of the things that you might have forgotten that are in the shop. You know me, I like to um, make sure that you know exactly what's in the shop. I don't like you to be um, uh, misinformed. So I'm going to go around. There's a couple of things that you might have missed or forgotten that are there. Magic binding tomorrow. Ah, oh, magic binding. I love a magic binding. It's so... It's worth worth the extra effort with the binding. Ah, there we go. I got it. Um, so we're going to... Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Daphne, who is our grace frame. Um... She's beautiful when she plays, right? So we've just finished a quilt for a lady in Cardiff. Um, and we've got a few more on there to do. Um, I'm sorry if, you, if you've been waiting. We're getting to them. There's another one ready to go, which is a beautiful uh, hand quilted quilt. Quilt. Has she only got one ear? He's only got one ear. Why? Why? Um, he was in an accident. Okay. He got run over and uh, the car clipped his ear as he was going past. Um, I just haven't done one. Have you and done one ear? You've done them all? Yeah. I thought you'd like to see it sort of finished. I will leave a gap to shove his ear in. I'm running out of pins. Where's my pins gone? As you can see, I have lots of pin cushions. So of course, when I go to find a pin, they're always in another cushion somewhere. I need to consolidate my pin cushions. Okay, so we're getting there, kids. We're getting there. So you're going to come along and pin it all down, as usual. Jane's making an American-themed quilt. Ooh. So she needs red, white and blue fabric. Oh, we've got some of that. We can help you with that. As you're coming along, make sure that you don't um, pin his ear in. Otherwise, you... that hurt. Now, some people use these as pin cushions. You can do them as toys for your kids. Okay. I think we're about ready. So I'm going to start this at that point there. Why? Uh, because you've got to pick a point. you just got to pick a point at some point. So... Uh, where's my needle? Where's my needle? So down, forward a bit, back, right. Oh. Now I've caught the um the headpiece. I've made sure that it's within the needle, um, within that stitch. Um, but then you want to try and get it out the way, which is another reason for starting there because you'll remember it. Otherwise, you just go all the way around and he'll end up with a head like that. Just like that. Not like that. Not like that, like that. So we're going along. Oh, bear with me. No, it's, it's a dog, it's not it's bear. It's a dog, it's not bear. It's so not, yeah, Tom Bear, bear was one of, the, one of the ones that we were about to do before we uh, shut down. Um, for COVID, make sure your your headpiece is out of the way as you're going round. Um, but then you want to make sure that when you get to this bit, you want to make sure that you go over that point where the other point of the head. So again slowly round, take it a few stitches at a time 
turn a couple of stitches now this is a small enough project that you could do this by hand as well um, I have suggested to Catherine Lum that she does it by hand um, again she taught me more swear words oh, I've got to stop doing that right just think of that as me putting his mouth in Again, when you get down to here, make sure that his other leg is out of the way. Otherwise, you have problems walking. So we've been packing up stuff today to go to her chanda uh, Sarah's on on Sunday um, we're doing a couple of um, June Taylor uh, products and we've got uh, more mini charms which were beautiful there was one there that I thought was really pretty um, and a couple of William or May Morris she's not they're not my favourite type of fabrics, but they were beautiful. Anyway, uh, a couple of jelly rolls, uh, which are for cushions. And they look really good. I mean, we all know that Sarah's a nice, neat sewer, but they look fresh and um, something that you wouldn't mind on your on your uh, your own sofas even I like them can Catherine Lum sew by hand Catherine Lum can sew by hand but won't sew by hand <laughs> so magic binder would be perfect for Catherine because there's no hand sewing involved right again little stitches a few turn now this machine comes with a knee thing and I wonder whether sometimes doing this I should have a go and see whether it works does anybody else use the knee Attachment. lever right Again, you want to make sure that your needle goes through that um, the point, the spot at the back, so it catches the uh, the other side that you've already put in. Now we're going up and round his tail. Bloody pins. Going back to the jelly rolls, we've got um, a really beautiful retro one with snails and foxes and be perfect for a teenager. And then you've got Marilyn colours, so nice golds and browns and creams. Okay, we're nearly there kids. Yeah, just a straight bit to go. Where do we stop? Sorry? I just wondered about the stuff in that was on. Ah, um, it's all down the end. Okay. So right back to where you started. Okay. A lock stitch. Okay. So we have a duck. Look at that. We're going to clip all the corners and then you turn him inside out, the right way out. Okay, just making sure that I've uh, hit all the spots. 
I've done pick to put his uh, his tail in there, uh, his ear in there. So I'm not going to clip that side. I've clipped that one. Right, we're going to go round his nose. And as you're clipping, don't clip your stitches. Okay, you get the picture, turning them round the right way now, and you can see Kate Varallo has a new machine coming tomorrow. <gasps> oh, this exciting, Elaine, Eileen. Kate. Which, no, her name's Eileen. Um, Sorry. We don't know why. That's fine. Uh, it's something that I just I see the name. I say yeah, the name. Yeah, it's, it's Eileen. So, which one did you choose, Eileen? Right. So, which bit's that? That's his leg. I'm trying to stuff his tail up his leg. Got a bit of a messy bum there. A bit like I was when it fell in the river. Oh yeah, the dog fell in the river yesterday, the the Ely River. I couldn't get out. There was panic stations then. I was looking a bit bedraggled still. Could do with a wash. Right. So your tail eventually pops out. Now you would normally use stitching fab, um, thread that matches what you're doing okay so a little perky tail. I think he looks like the uh, the dog in um, Jack Skellington um, Nightmare Before Christmas. Isn't there a dog in that? I think he looks a bit like that. So you push him all out and go round and make sure all your seams are pushed out. Then when you start to stuff, I stuffed from, I stuffed his head and then I stuffed his tail before I started on anything else. So you can see already that, look at that, that side because he has an ear on that side. So you can see already that he's starting to look quite baggily dog-like, okay? So, in true form, to Sarah Jane form, here's three I made earlier. So we're going to look at eyes, okay? Now, I've stuffed them, but I haven't finished them up. Now, I like, when I'm doing eyes, I would... Stick a pin cushion, uh, stick a pin in to see whether it, that's where I want my eyes. Okay. Eileen said, Yes, they were out of stock of loads of machines, not due until July, so she offered her a demo which had only been out of the box for four months, of which half of that was in lockdown anyway. Cool. Doesn't say which machine, though, no, but you might know. No. Okay. So I think. I. 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 We're going to do this. This one. What size did I choose after? So. I meant to get these out earlier. Again, in my little bag of tricks fit. so probably before you stuff too much of it you would you 
and you decide where you're going to put them. A bit like can snaps, you want to She has an Innovus A150. Nice. I love a brother. Nearly all my machines, I think all my machines have brothers. Yep. Okay. Now it should make his own little hole and then screw in. It did on the practice run. Yeah. It usually does. Okay. So. If all else fails, make a little egg. I don't like to do that. Because sometimes it will just... It makes a... Um, a ladder. You know, like you get your ladders in your tights. It's a bit like that. Okay. So with a safety eye, you're going to put it on cupped like that. I can't do that because you never get them off. That's the whole point of a safety eye. So, there's that. Came with a free quilting kit as well. Okay, there we go. It's on. So, we have an eye. It's quite cute. Look at that. So there's an eye. Now you could, um, if you'd given this to a child, then you would want to embroider the eye rather than... Um, push on. Pu push on. You could applique the eye on before you, um, before you sew it all together. Uh, but then you're pretty much guessing where the eye's going to go. I quite like those. It's quite cool. As you can see, the stuffing's come out. Now, um, we use stuffing from pillows and duvets. Uh, it goes a long way. Uh, we found that the stuffing that we were using was uh, as good as the toy stuffing. So we do that now in our classes so there would be your eye now where's my dark a dark one with this one if I was going to embroider it you decide where your eye would be now an easy way if you're not very good at embroidering eyes if you just do that and then embroider that with a black uh, embroidery silk you get a closed eye so he would be asleep be asleep and that's an easy way to do an eye on anything that you do, you're doing. Um, you could put one eye in and then put a winky. You could put a winky eye on. It would be winking at you. Yeah. See? If you sewed in a winky eye, it would be winking at you. Now this is iron off, so that's fine. Okay. Um... Sewing up. Are these for sale? Well, these dogs, um, I haven't thought about it. Um, why? Which one do you want? Okay. Jane Case has just asked. <laughs> Make your own, Jane. Right, pink. We're going to do ladder stitch and then I will leave you to get back to your lunches. So, a little bit of thread. Problem with using a, um, a magnetic 
using a magnetic thing to keep your pins on because it makes everything magnetic. It changes your polar thing. Now this is where you go, Sarah, when you, when you just do this. go not in the bottom where's the pattern at the moment the, is, is the pattern is on online I will send a link a link right do you want to come in close where are we going now we're going to show ladder stitch okay, okay. let me come around this way so it's right. POV I can't see I can't see I'm gonna have to do this hang on sorry people Right, ladder stitch. Where it's come out there, you want to go in on the other side exactly parallel and do a stitch. Then parallel. Like that. So that when you pull it, it closes up okay and apart from the stuffing sticking out it's a better a better finish than some of the other seams that are done with the machine see? yeah hand sewing brilliant okay so that is Dave the Dash Hand I will put the link up for you um, I hope that's helped a little bit of going through there we go and that one I will finish now as long as you tell once you've finished it as you're putting in the last stitch as long as you tell them that they're going to be a pin cushion it doesn't hurt if it's going to be a toy and then you start putting pins in it it's going to hurt them okay but from me and my Daves all of them it's bye Going bye bye now, are we? Bye bye.